I think one thing that I was worried about at university was I need to be really clear about the area that I want to focus on and what I want to do. Otherwise, employers will think that I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a clear identity. That just wasn't the case. Well, I left um, the university after doing a master's. I then went to a local law firm doing personal injury. I then moved on to a commercial firm in Leeds and I got the opportunity to do some work in-house at Lloyd's Banking Group whilst I was there. And then I was offered a training contract at CPS and I trained to be a solicitor there. So the good thing about um, CPS is that even if you're a solicitor, you get the chance to do advocacy. So when I qualified, I was um, doing advocacy in the magistrate's courts. And then um, I've been at the CPS up until October this year when I, I came back to the university. So yeah, I've been around the houses. Um, and in that time, I've done personal injury, clinical negligence, maritime law, commercial litigation, and then crime. So um, I think one thing that I was worried about at university was I need to be really clear about the area that I want to focus on and what I want to do. Otherwise, employers will think that I don't know what I'm doing and I'm not, I'm not, I don't have a clear identity. That just wasn't the case. Every time I got some new experience that pushed me forward and all the skills were transferable throughout the different areas of law. So my advice is always to just take the opportunities as they come and pursue them and so that's why my my career looks like that um but that served me well i guess did you find that when you were at university there was so i think phil might find this quite funny but the certain subjects at university where you go hang on i don't think i'm going to use this so i'm just going to brush it under the i'll do it but i'll brush it under the carpet and you know put i'll open that book read it yeah. i won't use it again and then in five or so years time you go where did I put that book? <laughs> I need it now. I need to read through it. And then you, you're using something that you didn't think that you would need. Yeah. I think I went through university thinking, oh, I'm not going to need this. I'm not going to ne never use that knowledge ever again. But mm. funnily enough, on the first day, I did. Well, it, with something like crime, you'll find, you'll think, right, well, I'm never going to use land law. But then you'll get a neighbour dispute. And all those kind of principles that you, you learnt in land law that you thought you'd forgotten then come flooding back because you actually need to use them. So the, there is that crossover. Um, and it, it's not just about the knowledge and the, you know, the subjects that you're covering. It, it is the skills and you don't even get those skills just from university. You know, I had a part time job while I was at university and, you know, working in retail at Christmas was one of the examples I gave when I had an interview. It, all your experiences are important. Um, and yeah, even subjects that you really enjoy, you might never use again after university, but that doesn't mean it's not valuable. I completely agree. Experience is experience. And I remember, like you said, with retail, it's well, if you've got people skills and you enjoy speaking to customers and helping them out and help them kind of that when they're shopping, it's their transferable skills and you can use them going into law. And even when I did my interview, so I worked with a local law firm and when I did my interview for them, they didn't ask me about my legal experience. I had my CV and I was like putting all my law stuff right at the top. Instead, they asked me about the shoe shop that I worked at and they said, wow, you've worked here for two years. That shows you're really committed to where you work. And I wouldn't have even put that together, but that's what they were asking me. And I was like, yeah, that is me. When I kind of dedicate myself to something, um, I do and I put everything into it and they were like that's exactly what we're looking for so even when I thought yes all this legal stuff that I've done that will be like the first thing they asked me about it really wasn't it was all the other stuff and it was that advice that I actually got when I was here it was with the um, careers advisor and she was like experience is experience whatever you even if you think it's irrelevant put it down because someone else will see something in it that you maybe don't and I found that even retail, any anything else really, it all came in hand, it's all transferable. I think studying a law degree as well gives you foresight 
um, I think you, if you're practicing law or, or dealing with law, I think you've got to picture it as a game of Connect Four. Um, if I put this coin in here, where's the opponent going to go next and are they going to win? I think it's when you're piecing together a case or uh, if you're in a non-legal job and you're looking at a policy, where is the loophole in this? I need to cover that off. And I think it gives you foresight in many different ways. When I was at um, university, I was working part-time as a lifeguard. And I think the, the foresight that I was learning on the law degree is like, right, if I let that child swim 10 feet more, they're going to be in a position where they can't stand up. So I need to stop that child from swimming. But if I stop that child from swimming, is the child's father going to shout at me for being mean? Or it gives you foresight and you've got to weigh up the pros and cons of that decision um, and whether or not the step that you make is going to strengthen the position or perhaps leave it open to other alternatives.